Hey everybody, it's Tyler. Welcome back to the Pulpit Librarian. I know it has been several weeks since I have put out a video. As you very well know, this is an extremely busy time of year for me. Uh, that consists of a lot of labor that goes into my church's Christmas candlelight production concert that we do every year. We just wrapped that up yesterday. I put in probably 35 hours or so programming lighting and media and whatnot, so I was at the church every night for the last several weeks, but today I do have a little bit of time to sit down and I'm going to try and record a couple of videos to bring you. I am still planning on bringing you an extended um, discussion on uh, Craig Keener's Spirit Hermeneutics, which I just finished uh, a few weeks ago, but today I'm going to bring you something very brief, a review on The Unflawed Leader by Stan Gleason, who is the Assistant General Superintendent of the Western District of the United Pentecostal Church. I don't read a ton of leadership books, and the reason for that is because I find them to be pretty gimmicky. Um, I find most of their content to be sort of a dime a dozen. Uh, they all follow the same basic format, and many of them leave you uh, with more questions than answers, a lot of uh, vagaries, and very little application. That's not the case with this book. I'd heard good things about it, and so I picked up a copy at the General Conference of the UPCI a few uh, months ago now. What I like about it, um, oh, the subtitle, Creating a Culture of Christ-like Wellness in the Local Church. Christ-like and wellness, those are those are two key phrases. Um, as far as the Christ-like portion goes, uh, Brother Gleason really zeroes in on what made Jesus a successful leader and what set him apart as a leader, and we don't really think of Jesus in that regard all the time. The fact that uh, he experienced every challenge of of ministry of pastoral ministry evangelistic ministry every challenge of of leadership ministry that uh you and i may ever go through jesus experienced it and encountered it um you know he he had trouble building a congregation but uh he he had an easy time building a crowd uh, he had people who were showing up for the wrong reasons he had skeptics in the audience who would challenge him he had his motives questioned he had his morals questioned uh, uh, any, any sort of um, um, confrontation that you can imagine, Jesus Christ experienced it in his life and ministry. So uh, Brother Gleason examines how Jesus responded to, to hurts and heartaches. Uh, he was betrayed by one of his own followers. He was stabbed in the back by somebody who was a member of the church, by somebody who was a fellow minister, by somebody who was an underling of his. Um, how did he respond to it? And, and, and there's a wealth of content there that he really delves into. Uh, and then the second, the second key word I mentioned is wellness, and that really is a, a focal point here. The, I, I was always taught um, when I was growing up and first getting started with preaching, my bishop, uh, my pastor at the time, uh, I had a phrase that he would repeat often, and that's, you have to build a man before you can build a ministry. The wellness of the leader, the wellness of the pastor plays such a critical role in determining uh, the wellness of a church. So the best chapters that I found in here, the chapters that make it worthwhile, let, let me give you my one complaint, and that is that Brother Gleason really uh, quotes a whole lot of other people. He quotes John Maxwell a bunch, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I care what those other people have to say, and I haven't read their books, so I appreciate him citing and and. and providing quotes and extra information, but the book is at its best when Brother Gleason is sharing his own testimonies and his own stories, and it does take a few chapters before he really gets into the swing of doing that. But right around the middle section, chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 9, I marked as the best chapters in the book. Um, chapter 6, Christ-like leaders practice self-care. Chapter 7, Christ-like leaders pursue peace. And then chapter 9, Christ-like leaders give the gift of greatness. Let me flip there and show you a few of the things that I gleaned from the book because I think you should pick up a copy and I think you'll glean a great, glean a great deal too. Christ-like leaders practice self-care. Let's see. Um, hmm. Oh goodness. And an important part of self-care in leadership is not to allow a lack of appreciation or recognition disturb your peace and make you feel unappreciated. Uh, what's the metric of success for you as a leader? Is it, is it people telling you you're doing a good job? Is it accolade or acclamation? Uh, what's the standard of success? Is it a response when you're in the pulpit? Um, let's see. Oh, goodness. This is wonderful. 
You might say that Jesus guarded his energy. Author Lori Beth Jones suggested that Jesus was so clear about his mission that he avoided many real and potential energy leaks. She reasoned that even though he was a teacher, he refused to engage in meaningless debates with critics who wanted only to argue and not to learn. Even at his trial, he did not waste time, energy, or words in what he knew would be a useless defense. Even though he was a recruiter of sorts, he never wasted energy begging or manipulating others to follow him. In fact, he trained his disciples to wipe the dust from their feet and keep moving if people were resistant to his mission. Um, and then Brother Gleason adds, he says, By the grace of God, I have always been able to sleep. Even during some of my darkest seasons, God has given me rest. You just don't waste your time and your energy expending it on people who um, are resistant or who are against you. And that's contrary to what we think ministry looks like. But it's what Jesus practiced and it's what he taught. Don't waste your time on people who are are opposed to you, who are your enemy, when there are so many hungry, hurting people who actually do want your help, who are available for you to help. Um, he, he continues in like manner throughout that chapter, talking about this concept of shaking the dust off your feet, not wasting time with the, the fruits and the nuts, um, that, that the church is a lot like granola in that regard. There's a lot of fruits and there's a lot of nuts, and you just need to not worry about them. Uh, let's see. Christ-like leaders pursue peace. I loved this chapter. He talked about how, um, let's see, let's see. Leadership built on the constant raising of issues is unsustainable. A steady diet of negative preaching, finger pointing, or calling out of things you don't feel like may solicit cheap amens, but it will also attract a certain mentality of people that will never impact a community. That negative preaching, negative churches, I'm always against this, that, and the other, woe is me, I'm the last guy preaching doctrine, I'm the last bastion of truth in my community, blah, blah, blah. It's not a, a healthy leadership mindset, it's not a healthy ministry mindset, and Jesus certainly never exhibited that in his entire life and ministry. And then that last chapter, chapter 9, Christ-like leaders give the gift of greatness. It's all about investing in other people, investing in other leaders, investing in people who are younger than you, who are coming up after you. And, and obviously we know that Jesus most certainly exhibited and defined that aspect of ministry. He told his disciples, oh, you think what I do is great, greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. Um, greatness was always God's intention for the church. He wants us to be successful uh, and, and that takes many shapes and many forms. Again, how you measure success is going to look different from how the world measures success. But uh, he does want us to be successful. It's not all supposed to be this um, um, mediocrity. And he, he gets into that idea of mediocrity a little bit. But the book is at its best when he's sharing testimonies and stories. He shares a lot of his personal heartaches. Uh, that he's experienced in ministry, uh, church boards that bullied him, uh, elder ministers who, who put him down, and, and we kind of get a front row seat to that side of things, but it's edifying. It's, it's not some woe is me. Brother Gleason's not like that at all. Um, it's not some woe is me. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, and I'll close with this, the first time I met the author, Stan Gleason, I was at, well, the first time I met him, he preached at a campus ministry conference in Maryland that I was attending and he talked about discipleship because he's written another great book uh, on discipleship. I've got it up here somewhere. I'll, I'll maybe pull it off later. A great book on discipleship and he taught this this Bible study on, on building a culture of discipleship and I discussed with him afterwards. Well, a couple of weeks later I was at the Because of the Times conference in Alexandria and I went up to share it. I think it was a testimony of something that had happened in our campus ministry ever since uh, We'd been at that conference just a few weeks before. I remember while I was having a conversation with him, um, somebody else, much more prominent than I am, important, notable, came walking up, approached, and they wanted to speak with him. He's the assistant general superintendent of our fellowship. They wanted to speak with him, and I remember Brother Gleason never broke eye contact with me, never. Um, I remember he, he raised politely, raised a finger to that, that gentleman who had approached never broke eye contact and for the next three four minutes we continued the conversation in fact he made sure to continue the conversation by asking questions and by by engaging with me and and i was taking notes mentally the entire time on this is what it looks like to practice what you preach 
this is what it looks like to just have no concept of politics or politicking. It's just one-on-one -on -one relationships with people and that that's what ministry is about and that that's what leadership is about. So he practices what he preaches and I would encourage you to pick it up. If you've enjoyed this video, click the like button, click the subscribe button. We have hit 100 subscribers officially. I'm very thankful for it. Leave a comment. Let me know uh, if you've picked up the book, what you think of it, or if you're going to pick it up. I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. I hope the Lord bless you and your ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you.